Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from the live radar so we are still seeing the effects of Storm Garrett as it does move slowly out into the North Sea plenty of heavy showers, very strong gusty winds over the next 12 hours or so we'll look at that in detail on the latest UKV have a look at the precipitation temperature and wind gusts over the coming days as it's looking likely to become slightly more settled but it's still going to be quite windy quite rainy just not quite as stormy as it has been the last couple of days and then of course we'll have a look at the longer term as things are continuing to look incredibly interesting as we head into early january as we have seen lots of models showing potentially much colder weather as we progress into the new year uh, of course we've got a sudden stratospheric warming potentially taking place in the next couple of weeks again that's throwing a spanner in the works and we continue to see huge model volatility the gfs has been one of the runs that has really pushed the cold potential into january now this morning it's completely reversed that and very much moderated its output towards more slightly colder than average temperatures but nothing ridiculous whereas the ECMWF has been the much more modest run and today it's now more of the bullish run going for much colder conditions with its ensembles so we're seeing huge variability within the model output and we'll have a look at that in detail to see what again is the most likely outcome as we progress into the new year so do remember if you enjoy my videos make sure you like and subscribe and remember to follow me on twitter as well the link's in the description now if you start on the live radar we actually don't have any weather warnings issued i thought we'd actually have seen subsequent warnings issued perhaps for wind and for maybe even thunderstorms through today as we are seeing some really quite hefty showers moving in from the west but actually we've got no weather warnings as we are starting to see the back edge of storm garrett move through the strongest winds and the heaviest heaviest persistent rain has now cleared but we're still seeing these really squally showers and you may have seen it's been on the news and going around that last night within the occluded front of storm garrett we did actually see a severe thunderstorm or multiple severe thunderstorms take off and the met office even stated that they saw a supercell develop within the occluded front and up towards manchester just towards the east and south of manchester we actually saw a tornado move through uh, um, with wind gusts reported in excess of 80 miles per hour up to as close to 100 miles per hour and there's actually been some quite large damage here uh, and that is why we saw wind warnings rain warnings issued uh, but we did sort of kind of see a freak supercell develop uh, again it was reported very close to the time that there was the potential for severe thunderstorms but it wasn't something we saw more than you know a few hours ahead but it can, again incredibly interesting to see the severity uh, of conditions from Storm Garrett and through the rest of this afternoon into the evening we are continue to see potentially some quite severe impacts again unlikely to be on the level of a supercell last night with a tornado but perhaps a uh, very strong gusty wind still 60 70 miles per hour and squally rain you can see that from these lines of showers at the moment through much of england and wales and some real heavy pulses within this localized heavy pulses but nonetheless still pretty severe and could give 15 20 minutes of really quite horrible conditions as they do blow through of course being within a very windy period it does mean the showers do blow through very quickly so yes very heavy rain around but it should clear through pretty quickly so if you are in the east at the moment where there aren't too many showers these showers are going to come through in the coming hours and could give pretty horrible conditions as we progress into the early evening further northwards closer to the center of storm garrett we still got some more persistent rain not quite as heavy and widespread as it was yesterday but still nonetheless pretty heavy and still seeing some snow over the higher ground where that freezing level has risen quite substantially so really only over the the highest ground at this stage for most though it's pretty heavy blustery conditions continuing and it's going to continue to be fairly horrible through the rest of the evening before it slowly dies down into tomorrow around lunchtime temperatures are below average in the north above average in the south pretty typical to what we've been uh, having over the last few days uh, but it will be on a cooling trend over the coming days as we head towards the end of the year if you also do have a look at the latest wind gusts uh, as well also wind speeds and we can sort of see what the wind gusts would be uh, again pretty strong winds around especially further westwards and southwards on the outer bands of storm garrett seeing 
pretty tight ice bars here. Sustained winds of around the 20, 30, maybe 40 mile per hour point and gusts 10, 20, 30 miles per hour higher than that. So still very strong winds out there. As we'll see from the UKV in a minute, still 50, 60 mile per hour gusts uh, are being predicted. So again, I'm pretty surprised that we haven't still got a blanket yellow wind warning issued uh, for more disruption today. Now, if you do have a look at the latest UKV, you can see over the coming hours those heavy thundery showers continue to rattle in from the west. But as they do clear through this afternoon into the evening, they should slowly die down overnight. And by midnight, showers more confined to Scotland, Northern Ireland, and maybe the far southwest of England. As we progress in tomorrow, showers will die down further, but we could still see a few showers around, just not quite as heavy and severe. Winds should die down as well. Some wintriness further northwards, but again, not expecting anything too crazy. And as we progress through Friday evening into Saturday, we see a slight lull, but that is because we see a brief ridge of high pressure ahead of the next low pressure system. And that's moving through, bringing some very heavy rain and potentially another squall line developing within it. its cold front. Again, could be some severe conditions along that. And as that does progress through, through Saturday evening, could give some really horrible conditions through Saturday evening for eastern areas for eventually clearing and then see another day of pretty heavy thundery showers coming in from the west for Sunday and then as we head into the new year again looking showery potentially blustery but nothing too severe I need to keep an eye on this little area of low pressure in the southeast which could clip parts of the southeast of England and could give some persistent rain through the first of Jan we'll have to keep a close eye on that and then as we progress into the first few days of January it does look like again we see a fairly strong westerly flow but definite definite pattern regardless of whether models go mild or cold is for a more southerly displaced jet stream into the new year which will mean more of the wind and rain will be focused further southwards whereas recently it's been focused where it's normally is with the jet stream slightly further northwards so more of a southern track jet stream will allow colder conditions further northwards but also uh, for heavy rain and stronger winds further south and of course if proper cold air does get in then we could be looking at some wintriness but again that is something for the next sort of seven to 14 days or beyond not the next five if you look at the wind gusts you can see through the rest of today still seeing 50 60 or even 70 mile per hour wind gusts across the irish sea um so pretty blustery out there gusty surprise we still haven't got a blanket yellow warning especially through this evening where winds could pick up further into tomorrow though they do die down and then as we head into the next weather system into saturday could see again some very strong gusty winds we thought a few days ago this could be a named system there's a small risk of that but at this stage it does look like it will be decreasing in intensity as it approaches which will mean most areas shouldn't see in excess of 50 60 miles per hour it could see locally 70 so still think there will be warnings issued but i don't think they'll be as widespread i don't think it will be named at this stage but it would be pretty typical one of the systems i say probably wouldn't be named does get named so we'll have to keep an eye on that of course i'll keep you updated with that into the weekend if you do look at the max temperatures you can see through this afternoon mild in the south 10 12 degrees colder further northwards as we progress in towards friday again cold in the north again risk of wintriness further southwards slightly milder but a pretty strong gradient from one or two degrees across scotland or colder than that over the high ground towards 11 degrees in the far southeast so anywhere on that spectrum for friday afternoon as we progress into saturday could be a frost develop quite widely especially further northwards and then into the afternoon milder conditions come in widely for the south much colder further northwards and then as we progress into sunday a very seasonable day to end uh, end the year temperatures around average around the four to seven degree mark quite widely so not amazingly cold but pretty chilly um, and feeling much more like a typical wintry weather as we progress into the first day of january very cold start across scotland where we've got cold air embedded you can see a harsh frost there elsewhere maybe just about dip towards freezing and then another pretty seasonable day average to even slightly below average to start 2024 and then again could see a frost as we progress into the 2nd of january so a relatively chilly start nothing amazingly cold but that is because we are seeing that jet stream displace further southwards and allow slightly below average air masses moving in remember around the minus five 
area uh, widely is the number we need for wintriness. As you can see, around the minus 2 to minus 4, we're seeing overnight temperatures down towards freezing, daytime temperatures around the 5 to 7 degree mark. You can see how another couple of degrees on those upper air temperatures would bring the risk of more wintriness or proper wintry weather widely. And that does have a risk as we progress into January. But in the next five days, we're not looking at that at this stage. Now, of course, if we do have a look at the longer range, GFS has been very bullish on a very cold pattern appearing for early January. But as I said at the start of the video, it's completely backed off from it this morning. Whereas the Eastern Blue F, which has been a little bit more tentative, especially in the longer term with its ensembles, has now gone a little bit more bullish so we've seen kind of role reversals with the models this morning but that is expected when we see massive model volatility not only in the extended range but when we've got lots of drivers um sort of coming up against each other of course we'll, what's going on in the stratosphere and then we've got various other climate drivers uh, weather pattern drivers that are also doing their own thing um, and that is meaning that we're seeing a lot of volatility. Now, you can see over the coming days, westy winds continue. And then as we, as, as we progress into the new year, regardless of if it goes properly cold or not, the jet stream is going to be pushed further southwards, which will allow below average temperatures to move in. Not cold enough for snow really widely, but cold enough uh, for it to be quite a bit chillier than it is right now. As we enter the longer range, this is where we start to see potentially colder patterns emerge. We do see some higher pressure blocking to our north. It doesn't really come off and doesn't really get going. And look at the tropospheric polar vortex actually gets extremely strong here with very strong westerly flow. That is complete reversal from what we've seen from the model recently. It goes from, you know, some of the runs yesterday were severely blocked in the longer term now to, uh, yeah, massive westerly flow and it's not like the blocking has just been displaced or it's a west base negative nao or anything like that this is no blocking at all the drops are at is extremely well put together the midnight run look at that yes it wasn't particularly cold for the uk with a ridge extending into europe but it was a lot more blocked the 6 p.m run from last night high pressure was built over the top of us and the midday run from yesterday a lot more blocking to our north so you see there is really no consistency from the gfs run so yes we're seeing one run here that is going for uh, a flat westerly pretty stormy westerly mild conditions um, but i would be very skeptical of anything the GFS is pushing out in the longer term, especially when it is being this volatile. But interestingly, it's backed off completely from the blocking patterns, especially in the longer term. But we all have to just see what it does over the next couple of days. We need to see some real consistency before we go more than hints or trends towards colder conditions. Uh, before we say definitely be a colder spell, we need to see more consistency, especially from the GFS. If you do have a look at the latest GM, uh, again, westerly flow continues to come in over the coming days. Jet stream pushed further south, which, which will mean colder patterns are looking more likely, but nothing too extreme. And then as we head towards day 10, we see a ridge of high pressure starting to build in. Again, uncertainty exactly where this ridge will go, but there is the risk of it building towards Scandinavia. That looks like it's what it's trying to do. But again, we can't call that at this stage. We need to see another couple of days beyond this to see whether it does get up to Scandinavia and try to pull in this pool of pretty cold air to our northeast. If you do have a look at the Eastern WF, as I said, the Eastern WF has been fairly mild the last few days. or not really showing anything crazy cold, but today it's completely reversed roles with the GFS, which has been bullish. You can see as we progress over the coming days, southern tracking jet stream into the new year, and then the blocking patterns start to get going towards day 10. Now, this only extends up to the 7th of Jan, so it's not even getting into the extended range. This is sort of medium to long range, 7 to 10 days, and you can see a big area of high pressure is developing towards Iceland and Greenland, and we are starting to pull in a northeasterly wind with some very cold air up to our northeast. So this would start to go cold and potentially even pretty wintry as we progress into early January. So complete reversal from the GFS has. If we go here, this is what the 7th of January, 240 hours is showing. If we go to 240 hours for uh, the GFS, a flat west with no signs of a big area of high pressure towards Greenland. So complete disagreement here, even at day 7 to day 10. Normally there is disagreement, 
but it is normally within sort of the realm of uncertainty. These are complete opposite ends of the spectrum. If you finish by looking at the ensembles, the GFS ensembles have been fairly bullish and similar to the operational run, they've backed off as well. Not completely, still is below average in the longer term into the first couple of weeks of January, but the amount of very cold runs, deeply cold runs down towards minus 8 to minus 12 level has decreased significantly with more runs around the average or slightly above average point. As I said, still it is looking below average, uh, looking chillier. Uh, the two meters temperatures are still on the downwards trend and the dew points are all clo getting close to freezing, but nowhere near as bullish as it was yesterday or the subsequent days the midnight run again had backed off quite significantly the 6 p.m run hadn't backed off at all still looking very cold and the midday run from yesterday was looking very cold as well so big shifts in the matter of 12 or 18 hours um, and yeah it just shows you the massive volatility we're seeing whereas on the other end the ecmwf is now producing something quite substantially colder in the longer term. Yes, it takes its time to get cold, but around the 6th, 7th of January, all the way to around the 11th or 12th, you could see a big drop there, with the ensemble mean getting down to minus 4 or minus 5 degrees at 850 HPA, with a considerable amount of runs down towards that minus 8 to minus 10 level, looking really quite cold as we progress into early January. So big, colder trends here. And the fact is, it's not, you know, overwhelming, but it's a substantial shift from what we've seen in the last few days, where it's been slightly below average, similar to the GFS, but hasn't been this bullish. The two metre temperatures are on a big downwards trend as well, down towards some two, three, four degrees, but the longer term from the ensemble mean, which is turning it much, much colder. So the longer term prospects are incredibly interesting once again. It's going to be very frustrating to watch, um, but nonetheless, it's going to be interesting. As I said, we've got lots of volatility going on within the various models, and it is going to have to, we're just going to have to simply keep a very close eye on it and not take any single run or any couple of runs really to heart that uh, it is going to be very up and down. But hopefully, fingers crossed, with the next few days, next week, as we progress into early January, we do start to see a little bit more consistency from these operational and ensemble runs. It is pretty typical the day the GFS moderates itself, the ECM OF goes more bullish, and it'll be pretty typical the ECM OF will probably moderate itself this evening or tomorrow, and the GFS will go bullish again. We'll just have to see how it does play out. But for the time being, still is some quite considerable interest for early January. But at this stage, we've got no concrete agreement exactly how it will play out but there is still as i said extreme interest with the risk of some severe cold weather if those blocking patterns do get going so as i said thanks for watching hope you enjoyed subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon